While we were singing, I went and I saw in a vision, I saw structures that had been built in families, structures that had been built in corporations, structures that had been built in government arenas. And I saw the voice of the Lord. I heard it, but I saw it move. I saw like the vibrations of it move. And the Lord said, watch in the days ahead. I'm going to shake every structure that is not of me on all sides. It will not be the ones that you think alone will be the very ones that are shaken, but it will be all those who have not built their structures upon the kingdom and upon him. And I saw it both in, I saw it in Washington. I saw uh, both conservative and liberal sides. I saw structures begin to fall. As he began to shake, the very fibers that held up their institutions began to break and begin to fall to the right and the left. And God said, I will raise up those who have a standard to stand upon me and upon my principles in this hour. They may not even be my own children, but they will stand upon those principles. And it is a season that the Lord is about to put his light upon those who stand in this place. So the cry of your heart this morning has actually moved heaven to begin to shake things that cannot be shaken, but that will be shaken for the season ahead so that that which is of him would remain. So don't be surprised in your family if things begin to move. It is not that it's a horrible thing. God is beginning to restructure and reformat your family so that it becomes in alignment for the coming season. For the storm that's coming ahead, the Lord said he longs to have you prepared for, and he longs to have you have the resources to make it through the season ahead. So you don't need to fear the season. You should rejoice that God's light and his glory is going to be resounded in the earth. And it's going to come through those who have prepared their hearts in that secret place, in that place with him, so much so that they have the structures of their own life in order. And then I saw the Lord begin to build family structures and for breakthrough, not only in your family, but all the way into your businesses and into your employment and to every other area of your life of influence. For the Lord said, in this hour, you're about to move in a realm of greater authority in spheres that you never thought you would have. Because I saw some of you on your jobs and the structures of your job begin to fall apart and then they will look to you as to have the answers for the very issues that have come. God is calling you to disciple even the places you work in order that the kingdom structures be placed in their rightful place. And so God wants to release to you today in every realm that you're in a grace to know that you can stand in this hour. And I just I heard this scripture also, we know it very well, out of Hebrews 12, which goes with this. And he says, And his voice shook the earth then, but not, now he has promised, saying, Let once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things that can be shaken as of created things, so that those things that which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And that is exactly what we were singing about just then. That's the very cry of our heart, which was right there. And I felt the Lord heard us, but he said, this is an acceptable service and reverence and all is that we show gratitude to him, thankfulness to him, that he's about to do this thing, not that it's going to be horrible, but that in the end, the kingdom will advance. And you need it advancing in your life and in your family and in every place that you have business owners, everybody here, uh, governmental people here that God has given you authority in. I want you to begin to embrace that. Walter's got something. And then we're going to pray and we're going to release this upon you this morning. Come on, Walter. And just pray a breakthrough for you. Yes. All right. This is for the deliverers in this body. Listen to this. When Israel had forsaken God and it turned to the idols, he always brought a deliverer. And sometimes those deliverers didn't know it until they were called upon. Like Gideon, hiding in the wine press, threshing his wheat, not suspecting that the Lord had his number. The Lord has got some of your numbers. This, like Pastor was talking about, the, the situation here is, is very much like Israel was facing. The Midianites 
have come in and taken over, and we're hiding. Now, here's what some of you are going to see. The angel of, the, of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. Now, this was Gideon's. Here they are starving. He brought an offering because he realized God was speaking to him. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of his staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. Then the angel of the Lord disappeared from his sight. But Gideon got the message. The consuming fire finally woke him up. Some of you are going to see that consuming fire. And when you do, don't back up. He's with you. He indwells you. He empowers you. We are to take the victory. Don't miss your opportunity. Be watching. He sought Gideon out. He wasn't looking for God. When you see God looking for you and calling you out, when you see the consuming fire, that's your sign. Buckle up, buddy. It's time to ride. What I love about the Gideon story, because Midian was still in authority. The Midianites were still in authority and rule, which belonged to the kingdom. And it's time for us to take back that authority. And like he said, Gideon wasn't looking for God. God was looking for him. Even the enemy knew how powerful Gideon was. You know, Gideon was a baker. He, was a, 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 he baked bread. That's what he did. And they said they had that dream that they saw a loaf of bread rolling down the hill. And the enemy said, that's none other than Gideon coming to destroy us. So God knew Gideon had the authority. The Satan knew it. The enemy knew it. The only person who didn't know it was, was Gideon. And maybe you're a Gideon here this morning. You don't know the authority you're walking in, but we're releasing prophetic to you today that you are that one. You're the one. Look at your neighbor and say, God's looking at you. Tell your neighbor that. God's looking at you. All right, so now you just, had a, you just got a word of the Lord. It just came to you from your neighbor. Now let me pray over you right now. We want to sing this one more time. I, I'm not trying to repeat a song to wear you out. I'm just trying to get it in your heart. And so, Lord, we pray right now. Go ahead and pick up the tempo here. Father, I pray right now that in this house, Lord, those who are going to see your consuming fire are going to be ready for the hour of their deliverance and for the deliverance of others. And that, Father, you're not only going to set them free, you're going to set their family free. You're going to set their businesses free. You're going to set their place in the community to a place of authority. Lord, you're going to begin to place them in places. And they're going to know because when your fire comes, they're going to know that you did it, Lord. We hide ourselves in you now. And, Father, give us the vision to see what you see about us. Give us vision to see even what the enemy sees about us. And let us begin to walk in the authority that you've called us to walk in. And, Lord, as the shaking happens, we thank you that our feet are on solid ground, that our feet are on the kingdom which will not perish but will stand in the midst of the shaking. And, Father, I ask for release of that this morning. As we sing one more time, we declare it, Lord King Jesus. All of heaven roars your name, sing louder, sing louder, let this place erupt with Show praise, too. can you hear it, the sound of heaven touching earth, the sound of heaven touching earth, Father.
Let the voices be heard. We want to see your kingdom here, King Jesus. You're the name we're lifting high, your glory. Shaking up the earth and sky, revival. We want to see your kingdom that is the United States. There are four basic governments in the earth. There's personal government. That's our relationship with him. He governs our life. We have family government where God rules our family. Then we have church government, the body of Christ, ecclesia. Then we have the, the, the government of the world, civil, federal, national, nations. And the Lord just keeps telling me I'm dealing with all four of them, but I'm dealing with personal government first. I'm going to shift you in your personal life. They're going to shift your family. They're going to shift the ecclesia, the church. They're going to shift the nation. They're going to shift the nations of the earth. We are in full advance. We're in full movement. So don't be surprised when God's dealing with all those areas of your life. <laughs> so it starts here. So, Father, I ask you to deal with my government. Deal that you would govern my life properly. And I would submit to your government over every area of my life. My thought life, my physical life, my, my resources, everything, God. Take over. Now, you get this right, everything else falls into place. Your family will start working right. You'll have authority in the kingdom of God. Then you'll have authority in the earth. If you don't do this right, it won't happen. So God is dealing with that primarily right now. So we've asked for the shaking. We've asked God's fire to come. It's going to start at your house, this house that you're living in. Don't be scared of it. Embrace it. Embrace it because it'll get you in order. It'll get you functioning in your destiny. Everything that's holding you back will be broken off of you. Father, I pray right now that we get a house of government here today. We declare this as a Congress. We break every congregational mindset, and we say it's a congress of people who govern in the kingdom. And, Lord, we want to govern today. We want to decree today what you're doing in the earth. And from this house of congress, we shift peoples, we shift nations, we shift many things in the spirit. And, Lord, then we walk out of this place. We walk in that government. I pray a blessing on each one here today as we shift. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Now turn to your neighbor and tell them you're about to shift into a new place, all right? Shift. Encourage them. All right. You have to tell at least two people before you sit down. All right. Good morning, good morning, everybody.
Open to Matthew chapter 7. If you will, real quickly, we're going to take our offering. I really want you to get you this this morning. Would you agree with this statement? I don't have enough resources to do everything I'm called to do. Would you agree with that? Well, I want you guys to have all that you need to carry out everything you've been called to do. And that, that requires money, doesn't it? Well, one yes, the rest of you. you all you must just live by faith. So when you go to the gas station, I say, I speak gas into my car. No. You've got to have some cash to put gas in your car. Okay. And so uh, I want you to get a vision of this. Now, you all know this passage very well, Matthew 7, verse 7. But I want you to uh, catch something here this morning. It says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Oh, what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give you the good to those who ask him? In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. I want you to focus on verse 7, ask. The word ask in the Greek speaks of desire, to have vision, to have purpose in what you're asking for. And when we sow, I really want us to do this this coming year especially. When you just give an offering, whether it's your tithe, your offerings, whatever the Lord's told you to bring, I want you to begin to envision and begin to see what that seed is and what it's going for. Begin to have a focus that God's going to just, you're not just throwing something random out. You just want to sow. Now, God's supernatural, and he'll bless you. Many times you get blessed, and you go, I don't know why I got blessed. I know I sowed, but I didn't know why I was going to get blessed here. But I want you to begin to envision that and begin to. I remember one time I was at a meeting, and they said, write on the memo of your check what you're believing for. You know, and I asked, I put on there that I would be able to tithe more. Uh, it's kind of an oxymoron because you can only give 10%, but. It was a whole thing that I knew something. Well, the next week, two weeks later, uh, my job that I was on, they, out of the blue, gave me a, a raise. It just felt to do that. And I realized my tithe increased because I, I, had, a, I had a new income coming. But I began to see something here. If I can see this thing, if I can mark myself toward it, and I can begin to ask God for it, he's going to be faithful. If I ask for this, he's not going to give me something else. Are you all with me? So as we sow today, I want you to begin to just, in your mind, uh, begin to envision what you're asking for. Now, let it be a healthy desire. This can't be for you, just your selfish things that you want. It has to be for the kingdom. It has to be for what God's going to do for you in the kingdom and through the kingdom. I want you to have a vision for that. And begin to envision it in your mind. Begin to ask God to show you what you're going after. We have to see that for you. So let's pray. Father, I ask right now, as those have come here to sow, as we bring this form of worship to you, Lord, we sit at your feet and we say, Lord, we, we just sow to you because we love you and we want to be obedient to you. But now, Lord, we thank you that you're our Father and you love us and you care for us and you know the desires of our heart to fulfill the destiny that you put within us. And, Lord, we need resources. Lord, and I ask right now as we name, Lord, our seed here in a sense, we say, Lord, that we are just believing for the breakthrough. For those that are believing for businesses, I pray the Lord as they name that, that, Lord, their business will begin to come to fruition in their heart. And then, then Lord, the, the structure will begin to fall together on how to do it. And the wisdom and the, the understanding will come with it. And for those that, Lord, need breakthrough just to come out of debt, whatever their need is, Father, as we, we name it, Lord, we just ask you, Father, to fulfill your promise, which is you said you love your kids. And so we sow today in faith, knowing that you're a faithful God, and that, Lord, we're not giving to get, but we understand your principle, 
that, Father, you desire for us to walk in our purpose. And I pray a blessing on each one who's sown today. I give you thanks for their heart to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, thank you, John. I think we have some video announcements. No video announcements. Okay. Good. I say good. I don't know. I want to say one quick announcement for the trip to Israel. I have not been able to promote it because I've been gone so much. But uh, really need to pray about you guys coming. Uh, it's the last part of May, first part of June. I really feel like it's a critical time for us to be in Israel and to do some work there. Um, the Lord, through some of my contacts there, has opened up doors that we're going to do things on this tour that we weren't able to do last time and get into places of uh, into the government area as well as uh, special places where they're molding the culture of Israel and what God's doing behind the scenes. And so I, I think you really should pray about it. I know it sounds like a lot of money, uh, but, you know, it's probably one of the best investments you'll make in your life. I, I can tell you when there's a vision on this thing, God brings provision. First time I went, my whole family went. It's going to be almost ten, eleven thousand dollars, and I thought, how can that happen? And then by the time we went, everything was paid for. God just supernaturally provided because I had a heart to go to this place. And I ask you to look in your heart and ask God to speak to you about this issue. So y'all pray about that. So I think it's a very critical time with what's going on in the land. And uh, I was briefed this week by some governmental officials on what's going on behind the scenes, and it's very dark as far as the the, the status of the nation and so forth. But God is raising up people to stand in the gap, and I think we can be some of those people. So you pray uh, about that as well. Now, tomorrow night, uh, we have another part of our South African invasion. As uh, Natasha will be speaking this morning, Beverly, uh, who's a prophet in the House of Ariel Gate there in South Africa, will be ministering tomorrow night uh, at our school of ministry. Now, this is for our active class as well as all those that have participated before. And if you're actually a good person we'll, and you're not been in our classes, we'll let you sneak in the back. All right, we'll let you hang out there in, in the back. You'll have to fill out some forms. But anyway, we'll let you sit there, all right? I'm just teasing. Uh, and, and what I've asked her to do is to help us prophetically, because uh, we most everybody in this house has been trained prophetically, is when God gives us an assignment of how do we go to that very place where God's told us to go. If he's telling us a direction how do we engage heaven on that specific issue? You know, a lot of times us, we're, we're prophetic randomly. We just, whatever the Lord shows us. But I really feel like the Lord wants us to get structural and that, okay, Lord, we need an answer on this issue. And we need direction on this issue. And we're going to, she's going to give us some tools and some keys. Because uh, this is something they do at Ariel Gate in Africa. And so we want her to release that. That's tomorrow night at 630 as well. Okay, children, we're going to let our children go, ages 6 to 12. We release y'all. Bless you as you go with the Andersons this morning. Thank you, pastors. All right. As I said, we have a South African invasion this week. Uh, Natasha will be here, and then Bev tomorrow. And next Sunday, we have another a prophet from South Africa. Y'all have not met, uh, Etienne Blom, and we ministered for him. John and I did and down in the Cape Town area, Stellenbosch, and uh, just a real pure prophet. Friends, He's friends with Bob Jones and Paul Keith Davis and some of our friends, works with them, and we really feel like he's, I, I, the Lord showed me he's come here to bust up rocks. That's what I heard. And so anything that's been locked up hard, I feel like he's going to come in here and God's going to use him just to break through some hard areas. And so come next Sunday especially to receive that as well. But Let's get to our, this morning I've asked uh, Natasha to come, and um, we were just with them in Africa, and John and I did. We had a great time with their ministry at Arrowgate. God is doing amazing things for that ministry there right now and how they're touching the nations of the earth and how God's blessing them. And here's what I've asked her to do today. Um, how many of y'all know or you struggle with why bad things happen to good people? Y'all don't struggle with that, Okay. Well, what about you? Are you a good person? Do you struggle with why, why bad things happen to you? Why is that system in there? Why is that structure in there? I don't understand that. God loves us. He died for us. You know, many of us were taught in our denominations that when Jesus died, he removed everything off of our life, so therefore we don't have to struggle with anything. Well, 
Welcome to reality. That's not true. Uh, the Lord says you'll go through these issues. And so one of the things that this ministry has is a capacity to teach and understand how to remove accusations off of you and to remove things off of you so that you get your breakthrough and that you go to the next level. And so what I've asked her to do is give us some keys today on what it takes to remove these accusations and to remove any assignment on your life that's keeping you from your breakthrough, that's keeping us as a ministry, our city, our state, our nation from getting to where it goes. The, the Word says the accuser of the brethren is accusing us before the Lord. That's in, in Revelation chapter 12. And it says, but we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and that we don't love our lives so much as to shrink back from death. And we, we received the word this week that this is the year that we fulfill that, fulfill that last part of that scripture, which is we don't love our life so much as to shrink back. And so I've asked her, this is a key, they, they deal with the courts of heaven. We've had Robert Henderson come here and teach on that. So this is kind of building on that, on, on how to remove this issue. Why are you not getting breakthrough in your family? Why are you not getting breakthrough in your finances? Why are you not getting breakthrough on your job? Are y'all, am I talking to the right crowd? All right? So we want to get, and she has some keys here this morning, so I'm going to ask her to come and, and just release. And y'all listen closely. She has a southern accent, and it's really hard for some of y'all to understand it because she's below the equator, all right? Let me pray over her because she's always going to make me do that anyway. So <laughs> stretch your hands. Father, I pray right now for, Lord, this precious saint, Lord, that you sent here today. And, Father, you cover her in the shadow of your wings. You hide her in you today. And may she speak from the throne, Lord, to give us keys on breakthrough. Lord, we want to have authority in our community. We want to have authority in this state, in this nation. And, Lord, we want to have authority in our own lives. And we need every accusation removed from us so that we can have every access to the authority that you have destined and prophesied to us to have. And so, Lord, I pray you give her keys today. May she speak, Lord, as one from heaven. May she speak as one who wants to see the children of God walk in the fullness of their destiny. And I thank you for what she carries. I cover her. We make her a co-labor in the ministry here. We say she has authority to speak out of this platform to change our lives, change our region, change our state, change every part about us. And so, Lord, we thank you for the shaking that is here in order that which of you would, is of you would remain. Bless her now. Give her the words. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. That wasn't a tall order. It was major, major tall vente order. Okay. Hebrews 12. Uh, let's go there. He was starting to preach my sermon. Um, verse 27 says, uh, the removal of those things that are being shaken. We, he's just quoted all of that. I want you to look at 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom. Say, we are receiving. Did you see that it is not finished? We haven't received. Are you getting this? And you, this is very important. We are receiving, which means the kingdom is coming. It is here, but it's continuously coming. It hasn't completely invaded everything yet. Can I have an amen? Okay. So we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So this whole therefore is about what? It's about the whole chapter of Hebrews 12. What's the whole chapter of Hebrews 12 about? It's about coming to Mount Zion to a court system in heaven where God is the judge. Right? Angels are present. The church of the firstborn is present. Right? Spirits of just men are present. Jesus' mediation is present. The Ark of the Covenant is present. His blood is speaking. Therefore, Okay, so what, what are we looking at? We are looking at the king is seated on his throne. He is the father in heaven, right? Everybody good? Now, in, in the old um, throne rooms, courtrooms, they were the same thing. 
The throne room was a courtroom, and the courtroom was a throne room. Somebody say yes to me. Thank you. If you came in front of the king, he could decide to kill you, or he could decide to bless you, or he could decide to get you to sing for him, or do a dance, or whatever he felt like. Right? Are you with me? So the, the, the throne room was also a courtroom at the same time. Okay. All right. Let's just put this in a context. Daniel 7. I want you to go to Daniel 7. And verse 9 says, I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days were seated. Where are we? We are back in a throne room. Where are we? We are back in a courtroom. Everybody there. Okay, and then there's a description, and then we've got the court was seated in verse 10, and the books were opened, okay? And in this, Daniel is watching this court session. I watched them because of the sound of pompous words. So somebody is speaking, and it's not God here. Everybody here? Okay, and what happens is he sees Jesus basically in verse 13 and 14. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom and all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. That is going to happen, is happening, is in the process of happening, has not completely finished happening yet. Got it? Okay. Uh, then I, Daniel, was grieved, verse 15, in my spirit, within my body. The visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. This is the same thing as Zechariah 3. Those are the, those that stand by. I'm going to give you a place to stand by. Uh, you've heard this taught here before. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Okay. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings which will arise out of the earth, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High, say this, shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Okay, so we are prophesying into the future. There, there is a, there's a picture going on in the throne room. So, so things have already happened according to the book of Daniel in God's courtroom, in God's throne room about the future. And what is it saying? It's saying Jesus at some point is going to receive all the, the nations, all the dominion, all the glory, all the everything. And you're saying to me, he did that at the cross. Yes, he did to a point. But it is not finished. Or we would not be breathing. We'd all be in heaven. We're not in heaven. Okay, let, let me do this for, you, for us for five seconds. Imagine somebody standing in front of you and saying, this is my testimony. I had the perfect life. I've never had a cold or a cough. My parents were perfect. My father was perfect. My mother was perfect. I had the perfect teachers. I've never bled. I've never, I've never had a bruise. I don't know what it is to be rejected. Are you feeling... Like you're talking to a Martian yet. Okay. Now, that to us is a successful testimony. Isn't that true? We think that that is a successful testimony. And I'm here to tell you, it is not. Because if you had a testimony like that, you wouldn't be human. And if you're not human, you don't have a right to in this fight. The fact that you have some things wrong. Maybe you didn't have a father. Maybe you, you don't know who your parents are. Maybe, who knows? Okay? You don't have a perfect life. Which is like 99.999 of all of us. Hello? Hello? The reason that you don't have that gives you the right to testify. You don't have testimony.
testimony opportunity unless you've come through something. Are you with me? The other description sounds like an angel. I never suffered, I never bled, I never da 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 Everybody loves me, I love everybody, everything's fantastic all the time, 24-7, fantastic. That is not human. Talk to me. And I don't know why we sell this idea that that is success. That's not successful. That's an angel. Being one. So what? Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're not in the fight. They don't have to prove anything because they were created like that. Are you here? The fact that you have things that are not so great about you qualifies you The fact that you want to do bad stuff and not good stuff, do you know? Psycholo psychologists will tell you. You don't have to get this from the Bible, but psychologists will tell you. Children are automatically naughty. You don't have to teach a child how to break stuff. They have instant revelation. Just put them in a room with the right stuff that you don't want broken. Now, how did they climb up there and do that? They'll do it. It's amazing. Children have to be taught how to behave and be good. They don't have to be taught how to be bad. They know how to do that. Is anybody in this room? You see, humans are not angels. Okay. Now, the, this is the interesting part. Okay, so let's go back here. So the saints of the Most High shall do what? Receive the kingdom. Who's receiving the kingdom? All these imperfect people. Okay? Are you with me now? That makes the fight fair. Are you with me? Because if we were all so perfect and we could just win everything, we would be like perfect machines or something. Are you with me? So we're not those. Aren't you relieved? Okay. So I want you to see verse 21. I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints. So there's war against the saints. Oh, I thought Jesus did it all. No, well, you know. Hello. Let's just read the Bible. It says here, made war against the saints and prevailed against them. Oh, this is not good news. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High and the time came for the saints to what? Possess the kingdom. So there's a time coming to do what? To possess something, which means we're getting it, we're receiving it, but we haven't completely got it yet because it's not all over yet. Are you all here? Now, I want, you to, I want you to begin to understand we're dealing with a courtroom issue. All right. Verse 25 says, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints. You have a little bit of trouble in your life? Persecute the saints. I thought Jesus dealt with all that. No, it says you have persecute the saints. And he will try and change times and laws. Okay. I want you to see verse 26. But the court will sit for judgment. Okay, that's what it says here. But the court will be seated, it says in mine, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it. Then the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. I want you to understand this is the context of Hebrews 12. The context of Hebrews 12 is obviously in reference to we are receiving. Is somebody here? Speak to me. We are receiving. That means continuous. We haven't finished receiving. 
Okay. Do you know that Satan hasn't fallen completely yet? Do you know that? When he's finished falling, he will be put into the lake of fire, finish the fall. Stop sight. In. He is falling. Okay, he hasn't finished completely falling. Because he left this high place in God and he's been falling. He's been descending. Stop comes when we come to the lake of fire. Over. Okay? So I want you to understand we are receiving a kingdom. Continuous. I want you to understand something else. We are being saved. Hello? Are you finished being saved? No. Did Jesus do it all? Is your salvation complete in heaven? Yes. Have you worked it out completely? No. Have you still got some wrinkles to iron out? Yes. How are we doing? Okay, you've got to understand the in part. Okay, we're not, we're receiving, we haven't received. Okay. All right, why is that important? Because if you don't get this, then a lot of things in your theology are not going to make sense to you. In other words, why am I going through the things I'm going through if Jesus did it all and it's over? Well, if it's not over, good. Then I know I can do something. So it should actually give you hope. Are you with me? Which means there's some things that are missing here. So what is missing? And, and, and this is what I've, I'm hopefully presenting. I want you to look at Hebrews 12. In Hebrews 12, there's a whole story about Esau. In verse 17, and it says here, For you know afterwards when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. We In Hebrews 12, verse 17. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Now what is Esau doing here before the court? Because I want to say something to you. The most powerful weapon in our arsenal is the ability to, to repent. You see, Lucifer can't repent. So somewhere along the line, in his history with God, I don't know what the whole story is. We'll find out one day maybe. But he overstepped his lines, his boundaries, whatever. Esau here, at some point, overstepped a line. Are you with me? So when he finally repented, God, God could not, he couldn't find repentance in time, so God could not restore his whole inheritance when he now wanted it back. It should have been Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Okay? But he, he and all his generations lost out because this guy doesn't repent in time. Are you getting this feeling that repentance is a little bit important? The fact that we can repent every demon in hell and Satan himself is completely mad. No, angry, having apoplectic fits about the fact that we can come to God and say, I am sorry. Do you realize that? Hello? Do you know that you can come back to God and say, you know what, I saw that and I'm coming to repent. Now immediately you do that. The court in session, we've got Satan now because he was, he's preaching my session. Satan is doing what? He's the accuser of the brethren. What's he doing? He's running around. No, he's not. He's in court all the time, man. He's very busy. He's got other people running around for him. Because he's, he's a spirit. He can't be in two places at once. Like God. Okay. So it says that he is constantly doing what? 
accusing us. So, Tim is praying. So, Tim, come to court, please. So, Tim, come, come to court to stand here. Tim is praying. Okay, so Beverly, I need you to play Satan. Sorry. I need somebody to play Satan. So, <laughs> okay, and I'm going to let I'm going to let Susan be God. Come, you stand here by the pulpit. <laughs> I'm just doing this off the cuff, okay? I promise you, I didn't plan. It. Okay, stand here. So Satan comes. Come, you on this? On which side are you on? You're on the left or the right? Probably on the left. Where, where would say? Where is Satan? That side. Whichever. Okay, you come on this side. Okay, so what's going on is Tim is praying, he's asking God, this is God. <laughs> Listen, Susan's going to pay me a commission after this. So, so he's speaking to God, and God is listening, but the, continuously, continuously, Satan is giving objections. Why he can't have what he wants. Are you with me? Now, who does God love? Okay. And, and, and <laughs> it's getting complicated here. <clears throat> it's like insider trading or something. Anyway, so, so, so God really loves Tim. He's not really in love with Satan right now. What do you say? Satan is his enemy too. Right? So does he like all the stuff that he, this guy's bringing? No. But he's got to listen. Why? Because he's in, a, in, he's in a judgment seat. He can't be partial. He's got to hear the truth. The, the accusation that's coming is true. He has to listen to Satan because what he's accusing Tim of is true. Okay, because the kind of accusation you're going to have from the devil is they said this in their heart. This is what they think. This is what in their culture they think is okay. This is what they think is acceptable. God, they don't really love you because. Can't you see how they behave? This is, this is going to be what it sounds like. Bev can give you some examples because she's heard, she's heard this a lot in court. Wait, if say, say Apostle Tim was praying for a breakthrough, say for the church, praying for a breakthrough for everyone in their provision and finances, then the enemy would come and say, oh, you want, you want breakthrough in your church. Well, you can't have breakthrough because number one, so let's say, let's just take resources because it's an easy one. So let's say he's praying for breakthrough. Let's just take it for him personally first. He's praying for breakthrough for resources. Then the enemy will come and say, oh, well, he can't have a God because number one, he doesn't tithe. You know, or he didn't tithe like this, or he didn't tithe like that. And if that, and, and that would be true, because the enemy only brings accusations that are true. And then he'd say, and then or we'd say to him, oh well, because he stole this, or he did that, or in his heart he feels this, uh, he's actually against this, and he brings all true accusations, real issues, and he brings them before the, before the Father, and says, no, well he wants this, but I object to that. He can't have it because the Scripture says. Da, 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 da. And he has not done that, so therefore, God, you can't give him that breakthrough because of what your, your word says. Okay, thank you, God and Tim. And <clears throat> well, you were dressed in red, I mean, ish. Okay, so just to give you a picture, if, you, if you're watching uh, court cases or you're a lawyer or, you, or you're aware of what happens in a court, you have to now prepare your case according to what people think. You know? What is your culture around an issue? What is accepted practice around an issue? Okay? If you're dealing with like something medical. Well, it's accepted practice that the doctor should have done X, Y, Z. Now, he left out number one, number two. Therefore, we can sue him because he is negligent. Are you with me? 
then that, the, the, the doctor's lawyer is going to come to court. Well, he didn't do number one and number two because it was already done because the, the hospital paramedics came and fetched them and therefore he was supposed to do number one and number two, so da, 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 or whatever. Are you with me? I want you to understand it is a legal argument. And the enemy has got to find holes to stop you moving forward to stop you getting blessed, to stop you having a breakthrough, but mainly, and I want you to hear me very well, to stop you being exactly who you're supposed to be in God. Because I want you to understand that Jesus died so that you could be everything, God and you, and the whole of uh, Hebrews 12, the courts of heaven agree that you should be now in 2013. I really believe God already wrote your life down. Everything that you would do in your life, because that is my legal standpoint in the courts of heaven. I go to heaven, I say, God, you wrote in your book about my life. I want everything that you wrote. Psalm 139 said you wrote every day I would live. I want every day. I'm not dying a day before. Okay? It get, now gives me somewhere to stand. I have something to stand upon. Are you with me? So if God wrote all the days of my life, then I want them. Because they belong to God. But I have an accuser over here trying to take them away from me. Are you with me? Natasha, just eat McDonald's for 30 days only. Some of you are with me and some of you are not with me. In other words, I can do things to stop my life going on. That's got nothing to do with God. It's my own common sense. All right, if you want to drink a gallon of oil every day, I'm sure it's not going to be good for you. I'm just being stupid, but I'm just saying. You have to do things correctly. There are protocols and codes for everything. Hello? We are receiving. We haven't fully received because somewhere in, in Revelations 11... Verse 15, it says this. The seventh angel sounded, and there was a loud voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become. There's an announcement. The kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Okay, so a whole lot of things have to happen until we, in Revelations 11, at that point. Are you with me? You see, some of our, our teaching is like it's already happened. It has and it hasn't. Some of it is happening, even as we speak. We are choosing, in fact, what is happening. Are you with me? Hello? Somebody here? So we are receiving a kingdom. How do we receive a kingdom? By becoming who we're supposed to be. You see, if Jesus died for me to save me, that means Satan had another plan for my life. That's not written in the books. It's written in books in hell. And those books may look like heart failure, paralysis, accident, half your face burnt off. Who knows? Are you here? He's got a plan. Now, for me to get into that plan, I'm going to have to believe certain things. My culture is going to teach me certain things. I am going to accept certain things as true. I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. I'm never going to make it. Hello? It's a mantra we all live with every day. Talk to me. Now, that mantra is not your Bible. Your Bible says something completely different. 
Okay? Now, if you do not repent from listening to that mantra, talk to me. You will get sick. You will fail. You will lose all your friends. All those things that you fear will come upon you. This is simple ABC. All right? Are you with me? But Jesus. But Jesus. Jesus did what? He went to the cross. And what did he do at the cross? This is the most incredible. I love the scripture. It says this. He took away the handwriting. Thank you, Colossians. I'm looking for this in here because I know that I wrote it out nicely in here and I can't find it. Okay, I'm not going to do it. Okay, Colossians. So what did, what did Jesus do? He actually goes to a cross for us, correct? How are we doing? Yes. He goes to the cross for us and he does what? He satisfies every single accusation of the enemy that he has ever made, will ever make, and can ever make, and can ever think of making, ever. So he answers it with his blood. Do you know how unfair that is? I want you to just think about it. You are the lawyer for the other side. You've prepared your case, and you're right. Here comes somebody who absolutely bleeds, dies, lays down his life, and says, whatever the price is, I'm paying. And the judge says, yes. How's that? That's unfair. I mean, hell has been preparing for thousands of millennia. And in one moment, Jesus goes to the cross, lays down his life, horrible death, very nasty. He lets the, the demons jump all over him for five seconds and says, good. All right, now I've paid it. Okay, Colossians 2 says, verse 14, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. Colossians 2 verse 14. Verse 15, having disarmed principalities and powers. So right there, he took what? All of hell's legal authority away right there. And he nailed it to the cross. So why is my life a mess? If I, aren't I supposed to have woken up and become like an angel and everything's perfect? Was that the point? I don't think it was the point. The point was, he wants us to receive the kingdom. Which means somebody else has got it. And it's being transferred in a court case. You see, the saints are going to take the kingdom by force. That same take the kingdom by force is receiving the kingdom. Same word. So we are taking it. We are beginning to get a hold of it. Eventually we will hold it. In, in Daniel 7 it says, eventually the kingdom is given to the saints. Finished. So we are getting. How are we getting? We are getting something that up to now principalities and powers have held. Do you realize that? When you understand who God really made you to be, you scare the devil, spitless, not because you scream and shout, but because you're going to take from him what he's holding that's yours. And guess how we do that? We repent. Listen, repentance is the transfer deed. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you, get, if you really get what this is, you'll love to repent. 
You know, if you know what you've done wrong, you can have a plan to fix it. One of the guys from, from in South Africa, his biggest thing was, find me somebody who's really angry, who's got racial issues. This is Bishop Jackson Causa. I mean, every time I used to go into conference with him, we used to do this major repentance stuff. I'm in a conference, and there must be 800 people, and we're doing tribe on tribe repentance. What the Zulus think about the causes? No, we called you dogs. I'm going, oh, Jesus. I just thought white and black people had issues. I'm like, oh, my God. Like. Seriously. And he said, I want to know what the angriest person is thinking because then I will have answers. Did you hear that? Because then you are hearing the accuser. You see, you want to hear the accuser, and he's going to speak to you, even if it's some person on the street that swears at you about nothing. I promise you, you'll hear him. Start to listen. But instead of getting upset, say, thank you so much. I'm going to court now. Why don't you like about me? You too, bossy. Fantastic. God, I just want to come and tell you, I'm here to repent that I'm bossy. Because when I clear that, whatever they're holding against me, they've got to release. And whatever they're holding back from me that's a blessing, they've got to release. See, I want you, you to understand something. You, you cannot get so personal that you're going to get upset about it. Okay? If somebody says to you, you know, Natasha, you're so proud. Good. I'm proud. I'm going straight to court. God, Pastor Tim says, I'm so proud. So, listen, I don't care if I'm half a percent proud, 99% proud, 50% proud, 20%. I don't care. The Bible says agree with your adversary quickly, which means I come to court and say, that's the accusation. The accusation, my dear, is the fastest way of your promotion. The accusation is the quickest way for breakthrough. The accusation, my dear, if you will just respond with repentance, is going to give you breakthrough so fast, the enemy is going to have, never mind headache, he's going to have a speed headache. You see, you don't defend yourself, you repent yourself. Are you with me? You go straight to God and say, God, I know I have temper tantrums. I know I get angry. I know I get selfish. I know, no, 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 no. You know? Yes or no? I don't know. Are you part of the angel group? Because I'm not part of the angel group. I have stuff to deal with. And that is what makes me legal tender in a court. Angels can't come to court and repent. Do you understand? And move things. Only you can. The very act of repentance is actually uh, you are moving things in court. Somebody's hearing me. What I'm trying to tell you is all your negatives, God is going to turn into a positive in court. But you've got to come and be humble enough to say, yes, in me, somewhere, whether it's huge, whether it's small, whether it's what, I have got pride. And even if I haven't got it and I can't see it, it probably is hidden anyway, and I'll repent anyway. You know, that so irritates the devil he foams at the mouth. When we go to court and we start to repent, you know what? The, this is come, Beverly. Come tell them what happens. This is what happens. It's like it's like this. It goes. You can't just do that. You can't just repent like that and just 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 take everything and just leave. But then I know we we're hitting it. Well, it's, it's what she it's what she just said. He be, he gets very angry because he goes for every little thing that he can think about, and then he starts getting really stupid with like stupid little things. 
You know, like if he's dealing with with something, you know, like pride, then he'll say, oh, well, and then you repent for pride, and he says, oh, well, there was this one occasion over here, and then it's like this, and he gets really, really stupid because he knows there's no answer. Every time you repent and just go, I repent, then he, he gets upset because he gets his anger begins to come out at Jesus because, well, it's not fair, God, that they can just use the blood. It's not fair. I've heard him say that before. You know, and it's stupid. It's like it begins, to, it begins to sound like a little child in a fight. And then you begin to realize, you know, really, that the blood of Jesus has won it all for us. If we just use it, the, the enemy has no more weapon against us. But you see, to assume that we've used it because we said, Lord, I give you my life. And then we wonder why things happen to us. Are you getting me now? We're, we're assuming we've done something we haven't done yet. Because God wants us in court, in his throne room, because, because he wants an answer to this ac- ac- accuser. And the only one that can a- a- an answer the accuser is you and I. The biggest thing for the Jewish people on Rosh Hashanah is, listen to this one. God takes himself to court once a year, they say. Listen to this. You are made in the image and likeness of what? Okay, some of you are unsure, some of you. I'm not in the image and likeness of a baboon, okay? I didn't come from a swamp. I came from heaven. So just kind of make sure where you're coming from. So if we were made in the image and likeness of God, this is the main... Why do you think Satan's so mad? He's actually accusing God, really. The fight's not about you and I. The fight is about the fact that we represent. And we are made in the image and the likeness. I want you to understand something. Lucifer says, I will be like him. I will set my throne above him. I will sit in the midst of the congregation. I will also sit, which means he's not sitting, which means he doesn't have a seated place. If you sit seated, it means you're not on the floor. It means you have a set position in a courtroom. Usually, if you've got to come and give a testimony or you've kind of got to come accuse someone, you're not sitting. It means you don't have a permanent place. It means you don't have a vote. Are you with me? It means you're not part of the parliament. We are part of the congregation of the Most High God. Do you know that? We are permanently in His house. And somebody wants your seat. I want you to get something for me just for a second. We've had, we've had so much teaching about, you know what, Satan, we're going to take your job. We're going to be worshippers in heaven. Heard that one? That's good. I'm going to give you a better one. He wants my seat. He wants my position that I didn't even know I had. From before the foundation of the earth, from the councils of heaven, he wants to sit. Because he wants to be like God. Hello? And the word like is from the word adama, which has to do with dam, which has to do with blood. And Satan can never be like God because he doesn't have blood. He doesn't have the genetics. You see, he is my father. The Jews say this. We call him king, avinu, malkenu. King and father. He's my father because I am from his family, which means I have the same genetics, the same bloodline. Angels cannot sing worthy is the lamb who was slain because they cannot talk about being washed in the blood because they're perfect. They don't have a testimony of having a bad life somewhere. Hello, are you, are you getting happy that you're not an angel yet? I'm serious. It's incredible. Okay? So he wants 
to be like God. He's got to be like God. So you know what? We have this whole Genesis 6 where he gets the sons of, uh, sons of God go into the, the sons of, what's it? The daughters of Adam. We have giants on the land. We actually have hell's kingdom arriving, Genesis 6, so, that, so much so that God says, I want to I obliterate everybody on the earth. Because the thoughts and intentions of their hearts are only evil continuously. Go read it, Genesis 6. Okay? Why does God like David? Because he's a man after his own heart. So we represent God. We look like him. We have the genetics. We have the blood. So in all intents and purposes, when Satan attacks us, he's actually attacking God. So this is what the Jews say. Once a year, God takes himself to court in Rosh Hashanah, and the only ones that can appeal on his behalf is us. When we come and we say and we repent and we turn back to God, we're saying basically to God, God, we're coming back to your image and likeness. Satan is not right to say, why did you bother to make man in your image and likeness? You could have used us angels. You see, God can only be the father if we share genetics. He doesn't with, with the angels. He doesn't sh share blood with them. Seriously. He can only be king. The angels cannot call him king because he's got to be king over his own country or his own kingdom, over his own tribe or his own people. So the fact that we can call him father says, I am made in his image and likeness. I carry the same bloodline. I carry his DNA. I am part of his family. The fact that I can call him king is we come from the same nation. We are of the same tribe. We chose him to represent us as king. Angels can only say creator. You can also say creator. But are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a difference. So once a year at Rosh Hashanah, when we come and repent, God can turn around to the accuser and say, there it is. The voices are coming right back saying, I'm returning. See, to repent is to return to what God wanted in the beginning. And basically, then God turns around and says to Satan, do you see? I was right, and you are not right. And all these millennia of building this case is not going to work. You see, Jesus is our, is our senior counsel main advocate who allows us to come into this court and make this testimony. Because the testimony has to be, once I was lost, now I'm found. Are you with me? There has to be a testimony that says, this was my life, this is now my life. Okay? And I am struggling with this and that, but I am growing. And I will keep choosing. Even if I keep making mistakes, I will keep choosing. Okay, Matthew 5, 25. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him. Lest your adversary hand you over to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. This is Jesus telling us how to agree with the adversary. This is not Old Testament. This is New Testament. And this is Jesus speaking. In other words, he's saying, if somebody's accusing you, Look at this. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law. Okay? So that your opponent doesn't go hand you to the judge and the judge to the officer and you are going to end up in prison. So there is a legal process that's going to happen if you don't what? Make friends, agree, repent, get it right, sort out your paperwork. This is Jesus speaking. Why is he telling us to do this if he just did it all for us once and for all? So why is he telling us that? Is, he just, is it just verbiage? He's telling us this because we've got to do this. Because there is going to, we're going to come into our own court case. Why? Because God's image and likeness is being tested in each one of us by our accuser. He has a right to test us. 
He's been thrown out of heaven. I don't know what he did in heaven. Don't know all his history. We don't know. We just know he was rebellious. And he said, I want to be like God. So what's he doing now? He's turning his test on us. This is the good news. Are you ready for this? If you've got someone who keeps pointing out the holes in you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You say, great. Where did you say that was a problem? There. Good. There. Let's sort this one out. Okay, where's the next one? Are you with me? You've got to see this as not something that is against you, doesn't like you, uh, is, is there to make you look small. I want you to understand this is the biggest blessing you can get. Because when you die and go to heaven, it's over. You're then going to live in a state of glory that you arrived in. The more you can go through now, the more you can go through now, the more things you have been through. Okay? Means that your level of glory is somewhere else than it was when you first got saved. I'm telling you, there are levels in the glory. It's not just one glory place. 1 Corinthians 15 says, and there's a different glory of the moon and the sun and the stars, and each star different from a star in glory. I want to tell you what, what we are going through every day and the responses we have every day, God is literally accounting it to us for glory. Are you with me? So this is not a waste. This is not like, oh dear, I have to go through life repenting. I'm going, oh yes, if I can't repent for something in me, I'll go find somebody else to repent for them. I'm serious. This is what intercessors do. Intercessors go, okay, now I've repented of everything I can think about. So let's repent for the family. Because this is in my family. What was in me is also in my family. So now let's repent for this thing. Because I can see the trait in my family. I've been stubborn. My whole family is stubborn. My father was very stubborn. My grandfather was like him. Da, 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 da. Let's deal with this trait. Because remember, everything, the way that we think, eventually sets up a culture. That culture then has a principality that rules it. So I want you to understand, when we start to change how we think, we change the culture. When we change the culture, we dethrone the principality. Are you with me? So... After you've dealt with your family, you go and look at your city and you say, what's it in my city? I'm going to take responsibility for what's it in my city. When people say to you, you know, you South Africans, blah, 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 I listen to that and say, yes, okay, good, I'm taking that to court. Are you with me? Get excited about being accused. Get excited about criticism. See where it's coming from. Turn it around in court for a blessing. I mean, what kind of a deal is that? Listen, l listen to un how unfair God is. God sits down at the throne. He sends his only begotten son to die to save you out of everything you never even did yet. Then you get born to do it. Then you can come back to court and he's very blood that... Okay, well, Shed, get you out of, I mean, this is, uh, how do you lose? Are you getting me? You can't lose. The only problem is we, we get this weird theology that says, okay, Jesus did it all, you don't have to do anything. Just keep screaming and shouting. If you don't take that accusation, acknowledge, yes, that's me. Or it could possibly be me. Or even if it isn't me, I don't care. I'm taking it anyway. I'm going to court. I like going to court. Are you with me? Then you can go to court for your nation. 
Well, you know, you Americans, blah, 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 blah. Go find out all the stuff that they say about Americans. Fantastic. You write it down. Go to court. Do you understand that every criticism gives you working material? When you just thought that you repented about everything and you're so fantastic, you need to be around people who don't like you. Because obviously you're around too many people who are telling you how good you are, how nice you are, and how well you do stuff. You need to be around people who hate you. you need, the more they hate you, the better. That's my friend Jackson calls. He says, I want to be around someone who's racist. Dude. I want them foaming at the mouth. I want them to scream this stuff in my face so that I can repent. So, okay. Are you with me? You're around too many people who like you. Most people who like you don't want to tell you stuff that's wrong with you. Even if it is. Especially your mother or something. My mother doesn't have that problem. <laughs> My mother's on the extreme other side, so maybe, that's, maybe I've got problems. No, I have got problems. Are you hearing me? Some of you have got problems because no one's told you stuff that's wrong with you. You need to t have people to look in your face and say, da 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 so you can go deal with your stuff. And the more you can get it done when you're younger, the better. Because when you get older, it starts getting very painful and ugly. I'm telling you, the older you get, it looks really ugly, the, the small stuff that you could have fixed when you were younger. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you've got a temper and you've got a, you've got a what does uh, Dr. John Kelly says, you know, you want to talk about authority, but you, you can't even sort out your four-year-old in church and get them to sit quietly, but you want to have authority over a city. Are you crazy? So what, I'm, what am I saying? I'm saying we've got to deal with the simple stuff. The attitude in my heart. I've got a violent attitude, man. If somebody cuts in front of me, I want to get out of my car. And I already wrote a movie. Smashed glass, blood. Now, that is not very Christian, in case you didn't know that. So I have to look at that and say, that came out of me. Yes, it came out of me. Out of my imagination. Yes. And did I want to do that? Yes, with pleasure. <laughs> what does that say? My testimony is, therefore, I have to change. Is somebody here? Are you with me? Hello? I'm trying to encourage you. Criticism. <laughs> criticism. Skepticism. People who don't like you are your growing point. That is where you grow. You see, people who only surround themselves with people who only are going to tell them nice stuff about themselves are actually really scared to face themselves. Hello? I've been blessed. I'm surrounded by people. <laughs> and, and maybe to the, to, too much, you know. I'm surrounded by people who are ready to tell me what they don't like about me. In no uncertain terms. Now, I want you to understand, that is your best insight into dealing with stuff in you. You want to grow? It's painful. You want to grow? Having someone stick, stick a knife in to find where the bullet went and fiddle around to come pull out the piece that's in there that's making everything bad. I'm telling you, you're going to bleed all over the place, babe. The good news is you'll feel so much better. Okay, can I tell you how to get through pain? You look at the pain and you say, you're not going to be here forever. You're not, you're only a temporary situation. 
You cannot be here forever. Because forever I'm with Jesus. So, I'm facing you right now, and I'm going to get through you. How are we doing? Pain is temporary. People not liking you, temporary. You feeling un- uncomfortable about it, temporary. You knowing not what, not, you not knowing what to do, temporary. Look at temporary and say permanent is coming because you are going to be shaken because I'm receiving a kingdom. Amen. That cannot be shaken. And you're part of structuring me. You see, there is no place for the kingdom to land if there's no one to receive what is landing. Let me say this again. We are receiving a kingdom. Daniel says, and the kingdom was given. After the court case, the kingdom is given to the saints. Daniel, hello. And then Jesus comes and receives the dominion. Because what have we been fighting for from Genesis 1? Dominion. Great commission. Take it back. Receive the kingdom. Am I speaking French? You're all looking at me like you've never heard any of this. No, you're supposed to be able to speak French in Louisiana. Let's try another language. Am I speaking Chinese? Are you getting this? Repentance is a tool, everybody. Repentance is the biggest gift we have. Repentance is the one thing that Satan is going to fight you for. Don't say sorry. You shouldn't have to say sorry. They can say sorry first. Listen, I don't have time for other people to do that. I'm going to do it first. Because you know why? I'm getting to the I'm getting to the throne room. Everybody else, take your time. Do whatever you want to. Keep listening to this little voice that says, don't repent. You know what people are going to say? Who cares? I want to repent. Because I want to break through. I want you to understand something. You will break through. Because you have overcome your pride. You have overcome your, your, um, your mental understanding of the way things are. Because the, the reason that you go into depression, the reason that you go into worry, the reason you go into what is going to happen to me for the rest of my life is because of a cultural issues around you. And you are programmed to think a certain way. So you pray a certain way. Hello? Am I talking to somebody? And as you get older... You feel you're less in control. Somebody's agreeing with me in the front row. I'll talk to these people here. You feel less in control, and so you major on minors. Instead of majoring on the majors. Let's major on the major. Let's go back to the throne room, people. Let's rewrite our script. Let's rewrite America. Let's rewrite Louisiana. Let's rewrite Shreveport. Let's rewrite your family. Let's rewrite your life. How's that going to happen? Change the way you think and the way you see things. Because what you think is your enemy is actually your friend. Don't you understand? God set up the accuser to help us. I want you to understand, he's doing all the research and all the baddest things you've ever done and your entire family and your ancestry. He's got it all together for you in a file. You don't have to do the research. He's he's bringing it to court. It's there. Access it, baby. Access it. Hello? Here it is. South Africa. Fantastic. Thank you very much, accuser. God, I want to just tell you, he's right. And I take responsibility and I repent for all those things. I am going to take full, I am going to lay down my life here for all of that stuff. What's he going to do? 
He's got to get rid of that piece of paper and go, okay, that one's dealt with. Next accusation, you go, hit me, baby, hit me. Let's go. You see, when we threw his pile, I have to get blessed. When we threw his pile, I have to get breakthrough. When we threw his pile, my money has to change. When we threw his pile, my influence has just changed. Because I have won a battle in the courts of heaven. It's bigger than O.J. Simpson, believe me. But I want you to understand that's what it looks like. Okay? The court is in session. God is hearing a case. Satan's there all the time. What are you doing? What are you praying? You see, uh, Robert Henderson explained it like this. We all rush out to the battlefield to do war and bind everything and, and tell everything and whatever. He says, what if we don't have our things legally correct in court before we go to battle? We will fail. That's what's going to happen. We're going to go scream ourselves blue in the face. Breakthrough is happening in Shreveport. Breakthrough is happening in Shreveport. It doesn't happen because we haven't received the kingdom for that thing. You see, to receive something means we're going to hold on and grab it until it is positioned. That's why the saints have to take it by force. We are receiving a kingdom. We are taking it by force. What's the force part? The force part is I'm going to fight with me. Yes, I do have a bad attitude. Yes, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not a morning person. Yes, I am sharp. Yes, I am this. Yes, I'm going to say yes. What have I got to lose? So called how people see me. Is that my issue? I can't do it because I'm too proud in case other people think, no, 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 no. Who cares? This is a temporary situation. For eternity, it's not a good idea to be in the wrong side. I need to get onto the right side today. Am I answering some questions here today? Are you getting a different perspective on repentance? I want you to understand it is the most precious thing we have while we are still breathing. When we go to heaven, there's no more tests. We go into a place of reward, and we are going to say, according to if you go and read all these people that have been there, we're going to say, I wish I did more. Why can't, can't I go back and do better? I didn't do enough in my life. So you only have one life to do it in. This is it. You have got to show principality and powers that God never made a mistake in making you in his image and likeness. You are representing him. And I'm telling you, Satan wants your seat. Never mind we want to sing like he's saying. Are you hearing me? He is so much more jealous of you than you understand. You have so much more going for you than you understand. And the biggest thing that you have going for you is I can repent. I can return. I can rewrite destiny. That's a wow, man. Do you understand Lucifer's been trying to rewrite destiny? Do you understand Lucifer's been trying to rewrite the future? You, you understand everything he's done is to, is to twist, turn, make a different. And guess what? Jesus just comes, dies, goes to court, puts his blood there and says, right, testimony is here. Everybody else, come and receive the kingdom. And I'm going to wait until you put all these principalities under my feet. How are you going to do that if you don't go to court? How are you going to do that if you never repent? So good. So now we're going to have this, this nice little theology. 
You don't have to do anything. Jesus did anything, did, did everything. Why? Because that means you're never going to come up to, in front of the courtroom. If you never come into the courtroom, you're never going to receive a whole lot of things. Just fight the devil for me, won't you? Come to the court. Come to court on all the issues that Satan is accusing you of. And you know what? What if it's not true? What, what if what he says is a bit of an exaggeration? You know what? I'm going to repent anyway, and somebody's going to get it, and it's not going to be me. You tell me that thing, I'll repent for it. Then it's going to turn around and judge you because I've done my part. Yeah. This thing is only powerful. Through repentance, you only win. Somehow we, we have equated it with admitting I'm wrong. And I don't want to admit I'm wrong to somebody because no, 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 no. Because it's about pride. When you come into the court of heaven, you want to admit it. That's the clever part. And you're not going to listen to this little voice saying to you, well, you don't have to do this because other people should have, and they should have been nice to you, and they didn't greet you first, and rubbish like that. I'm telling you, who cares? We're in a courtroom, man, for eternity. Do you know that we are fighting for eternal destinies for our children's children? Do you know that we're fighting for eternal destinies for our family, for this city, for this nation? And it starts with you changing your attitude about admitting you're wrong. Can you please get over that now? Like now? I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. What did he set me free to do? Tell you all the stuff that's wrong about me. <laughs> and not worry if you like me afterwards or not like me because I know God loves me. So what? And when you repented, you love me too, eventually. It's okay. Because <laughs> we're all going to be here at the throne of God together. So what are you going to do with me there? We're all going to be there. So work through your stuff, everybody. We're all going to the same place. Hallelujah. I'm just going to give you this thing from, what's his name? Yeah, John Moratori spoke about taxonomy. Do you know what taxonomy is? It's the codes and the, uh, for claiming taxes. Okay, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Jesus is the creator. We are the product. We don't sell Jesus. We sell ourselves. Okay, we sell our testimony, he said. In the court of law, we have legal representation in the court of law by Jesus. And the objective purposes of our legal rights here are healing, salvation, all these things. The written declaration of these purposes are the Bible. These are the objective purposes of the kingdom of heaven. The subjective purposes is that what everyone else thinks we should be doing. God has already written it. We have to come into agreement with what he's already said. He's only spoken good things about you. Hello? Hello? You just have to work with what you have right now to change it for the better. How are we doing? Our problem is we have been sold a success lie. You have to have a perfect life. Rubbish. You have to have had come from a perfect family. Rubbish. You should have been born with perfect everything. Rubbish. How are we doing? You need to be popular all the time. Rubbish. Actually, people not liking you is good for you. you no, know, I'm having issues with your brains here. Because you've all been indoctrinated into this popular American cheerleading nonsense. 
Who said that's right? Who said that's cool? Did you ask the rest of the world? Hello? You ask heaven and get it right with heaven. America, you have a mold. America, you have a call. Louisiana, you have a call. 318, where are you? You are called to do something specific for God, and God chose you with weaknesses and strengths in place so that you can be a testimony, thank God. Hello? Repentance is just our roadmap into the future. Anybody excited about repenting yet? Can we just stand up for a moment? Father, we want to come and lay down our lives, spirit, soul, and body here today. And Father, I want to say to you, I thank you that you have made me, you have made us. Thank you that you created me. Thank you that you've called me to be a voice in your courts, that you're waiting for my voice, that you are looking for my voice, that you are calling me to come into your courts so that you can hear what I have to say. Because my, in my lifetime is the only time that I can come into this particular court and bring this particular testimony. Now, Father, I am praying for every person here to be encouraged right down to the soles of their toes, Lord, that they can come and be who they are and pour out who they are, the real person in front of God and say, this is me, God, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of me. And you love me and I'm coming, God, right back to you. And everything anybody's ever said about me being prideful, about me being manipulative, about me being whatever, I agree. I repent, and I want to come and say, God, change me more and more into the image and the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ, so that Satan, when he accuses me, is going to see a living testimony of the son of God coming out through me. All of creation is waiting to see the manifestation of the sons of God. In this case, it's in a court. All of creation is waiting for you to come and confirm that the Lord, he is God in your life. That you chose him regardless what you went through. Regardless how bad your background was, how bad the things you've been through were, you chose him above all other things. And this is your testimony in court. And God, you're about to rearrange our lives around that. Because we win, it says, Revelation says, we win by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and not loving our lives even unto death. In other words, we are not preferring ourselves. We're saying, I'm here for Jesus. I'm here for heaven. I'm representing heaven. And God trusts me to receive the kingdom in my sphere, in my authority, in my personal capacity, for my family, for my region, state, city, and nation. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are receiving a government that cannot be removed, that is going to be eternal, and we are shaping it now. Father, help me. Help me in every thought of my heart that it will not be continuously evil, critical, nasty, like it was with these Genesis 6 people. That I'm not continuously negative about you, but I'm continuously excited. Thank you for the gift of repentance. Thank you for the gift of the blood of Jesus to wash away my sins. Thank you that we are receiving. I need you to be actively receiving people into your area, the kingdom. We are receiving until the court in heaven says, Jesus, come forward. All the kingdoms have been taken. Kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. But your part is come to court. Repent. Amen.
Let's seal this this morning by taking communion. And I want to sow an offering too. I realize this is a challenge to most of us if you've been raised in a Pentecostal environment. Maybe some of the word teaching. You know, we've been taught so many different things. But as a counselor and somebody who pastors a lot of people in the past as well, when you see generational things come from generation to generation, doctrine that says that doesn't happen goes out the window. Because knowledge without experience doesn't work. And experience without knowledge doesn't work. So you've got to put the two together. And we've got to remove some accusations. Let's take, for instance, we're going to take an offering right now for, for Apostle Natasha. If you have this mindset that says, God, you're not going to bless me even if I give, the accuser goes to the court and says, they don't even believe you, God. They're going to sow an offering, and they don't even believe you're going to bless them. So therefore, you cannot bless them. I need to repent and say with God, all things are possible. And when I sow, I'm sowing with faith today. And I say, I'm going to get what I, I'm, I'm asking. I'm naming this one as I want freedom and breakthrough off generational issues. Okay, I want things off my family. It doesn't matter whether I did them or not. I want it off. You can argue, well, I don't know, I wasn't responsible. Argue all you want and stay in your iniquity. Or you can repent and get out of the iniquity. Now listen, with repentance is key. Satan has no blood and he has no seed. But we as believers have blood and we have seed. So if he can have our blood and our seed, he can do what he wants in a city, in a life. There's an abortion clinic on, Hope, uh, uh, on King's Highway that is an altar to death. And until that is removed, the spirit of death rules our city. He doesn't have in blood, but he's taking blood every single day. Shreveport, our abortion clinic led the state in abortions. We had over 4,000 abortions. There's an altar there. So we need to repent. Why? I don't do it. So what? I need to remove. Daniel said the Lord in Jan Daniel 9 said, that the Lord was righteous in judging Israel because of the sins, even though Daniel didn't do them. Okay, so we've got to remove these accusations. On and on it goes. Men, if you fall into sin, sexual sin, fornication, adultery, you released your seed that the enemy took and used for evil to, per uh, to perpetrate his purpose in the earth because one evil begets another evil. So you repent that you, you let him have your seed for evil and you stop that curse. You understand that? James Robinson's father raped his mother and they got broken and now he's a leader in the world. He was born out of rape. But when you break that and you remove that curse, life comes from death. Man. You know, I want us to get this, and we're going to seal in communion because what Jesus did on the cross was remove everything, but we have to apply what he did, and repentance applies it, okay? So his body, he died for me. His blood, he shed for me. So, Lord, I receive what you did, and I repent for every issue. Every accusation and offense reveals the heart. So what, 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 what she was saying today was so important. You need to embrace when people offend you, not, not the offense, but you embrace the work that it causes in you because it reveals what's wrong with you. If you get angry because of what somebody did, they're wrong, but you're still wrong in being angry. So if you deal with your anger, you're not worried about what they did wrong. Okay. We teach this all in our courses. If you'd ever come, if you'd come to those, I shouldn't say ever come. Most of you have come. If you come, we'll teach you how to deal with those issues. We teach a course here on judgment. I will say this to you. Almost everybody here is taking it. It cut my counseling down at least half to 75% because we, people started dealing with their issues. And maybe if the church isn't counseling each other all the time, we could actually be advancing the kingdom. Now, I'm glad we got counselors.
but we'd like to work her out of a job, right? And let her counsel heathens. All right, let's move on. Let's take this. Take your offering. If you're making a check, make Christian Center. We're going to give everything to, to, to Apostle Natasha. Ask the Lord and then begin to believe today this is a freedom for your family, for you. You need to sow. I don't care if it's a dollar. You need to sow something. You need to ask God, Lord, I want to be a part. This is what we call trading in the heavenlies. We're, we're making a trade here in a sense. We're, we're sowing into something for a return of what God did for us. So I want to take my offering, and I want to honor the table here today. It's a holy place. Father, I thank you for this chance to sow into this message. We need this message, Lord. We need the accusations removed against our lives, our families, against our ministries, and against our city and our nation. And, Lord, unless we go this path, we will sit with religion and not have breakthrough. Religion will say to us, Lord, that we don't have to do this and we stay where we are. Or, Lord, we can believe what the Spirit says and do this and see breakthrough. And so, as we sang earlier, heaven coming to earth. We ask that right now. And, that, Father, as we go to the courts right now, we stand there and we say, Lord, we've been guilty of believing religious mindsets. Satan, we heard your accusation. And we agree with you that we have been religious and we now repent for it. I repent for my religiosity. Is that a word? We just made it up. Lord, remove it from my life and my family's life. Lord, for my family that was religious and didn't want to open their heart to truth, I repent for them. You need to do this. You need to repent for your family. And so, Lord, as we sow, I sow today believing that you're going to provide breakthrough for my family. Satan, I declare my family's coming into breakthrough. My family is going to repent. My family passed uh, whatever they did. Lord, we're going to ask for revelation so that we can break the iniquities coming forward. And, Lord, for the future... I tithe now, in a sense, to my great-grandchildren. And I say that they're going to walk in this inheritance as well of the valid truth of repentance. And repentance is what my family will be known for. <laughs> you need to declare that over your family. Repentance is what my family will be known for. That, Lord, we are humble in your sight. And that what you did for us on the cross through this bread and through this wine, what it represents. We receive our healing and our restoration back to us. Now, here's what I want y'all to do. As you come, get you some bread. Uh, ushers, if you'll come and spread this out a little bit so we won't all be at one spot. Uh, I want you to go back to your family, and if there's just you and your wife or uh, if you're a husband or, or whatever, if you've got kids, pull your kids in together, and let's just break this thing off our families. Take communion together, share it, and agree as you do that. So, Take your offering right now, lift it before the Lord. We wave it before you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to give, and we open up the altar in Jesus' name for deliverance and freedom today. We bless Ariel Gate, what uh, Apostle Natasha and Prophetess uh, Beverly does for the kingdom. We speak life over them and blessing over them. It's a joy to sow into them and sow in what they're doing, what they've sown into this house. Lord, their DNA is in this house. And, Lord, we need this message. And, Father, let us be open to greater mysteries and greater understanding about this truth. Now, Lord, pray an outpouring of blessing on those who give today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would.